I grew up on a farm, and I didn't realize I was going to be a farmer's wife. Uh, we met at a financial institution, actually. I was working in inside the clean worker, working on finances, and he was the handsome landscaper that was mowing outside and working in the flower beds. And we just kind of met from there. You know, as I was working, I always wanted to have my own business. And, and at the same time, when I was really young, I always wanted to be a farmer. Well, our philosophy of farming is just to do it as natural as possible from you know, having them outside in the sun and on the pasture. So these are the tamworths up here, and actually we could probably go over here. So as you can see, they got a big area to roam. Grew up on a small hog farm. My dad did it just part-time, and I raised pigs for 4-H, so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary for me to be, you know, living on a farm, and this is what I wanted to do, but yeah, I wasn't expecting that he was going to be someday a full-time farmer. We have just a couple dozen of the heritage turkeys, and then we have about 175 of the broad-breasted whites. So then Brandon moves these pens one face every day. These are the heritage turkeys. They're pretty spunky. We used to have them kind of just out, and they'd end up in the neighbor's yard. They'd end up over by the high wires over, you know, a quarter of a mile away, and they, they can get kind of wild on you. For turkeys, it's just the, the bourbon reds here, and then the, uh, the uh, broad-breasted white turkeys. These are all pens that have started at the top, the top of the hill by those trees up there. They are moved for the grass for them to eat, and of course they fertilize the ground. Uh, as you look at where they've been, it's an amazing thing that the, how much area they've covered. This pen has probably gone more than a quarter of a mile already. They're in fresh air, they're in real sunlight, They've got this fresh bedding that they can eat and they can fertilize. I mean, they take six months to grow to a size that's half of what their commercial sisters are at. What you get is a more flavorful meat. When we first started farming in the late 1990s, we had to educate people a lot because people didn't know what it meant to have pasture-raised meat. We had to teach them why it's better and how you know, try to get the product into their hands to show them, you know, how it tastes better. Like with the cattle, we are moving them to a new pasture every single day or every other day. The hogs, they kind of stay in this area for a couple months and they really rip it up and then we'll move them into a new plot. The quality is so much better that we've decided that quantity doesn't matter as much. If we can offer a quality product, our customers are going to keep coming back and we don't have to grow as much to sell and to make a living. This kind of farming isn't massive. I don't have big machinery and hundreds of acres to farm. You're more focused on raising the animals for each year and then marketing them. That, that's your harvest for the year. All right, so we are going now into our pickup joint. It's the name of our store, you know, the place where you pick up chicks. <laughs> we started to do a farmer's market back in 2004, it was the first year we did the West Bend Farmer's Market. At that time I had, my oldest son was seven years old so he came to help me and he learned to make change, learned how to talk to the customers and each child that got a little bit older once they were old enough, um, they were allowed to come to the market and it just they're amazing with their people's skills. That really, really taught them a lot. But this is, it's been, again, a wonderful life to raise our kids this way, and it really taught them a work ethic. When we first started, we were just doing whole chickens and cut up chickens, and then we realized, yeah, we didn't need to be more competitive, and so we did then, a lot of people like the breasts, and so we did the bone-in breasts and the boneless breasts, and we have some people that love the dark meat, and then that's what they prefer. We have the chicken feet, we have the bones for everybody who, want, who wants to make stock. Yeah, the consumer, I would say over the last couple of decades, just have, they've gotten more aware of their food, where it comes from, how it's raised. Um, they're wanting to eat a little more, much more healthy. Over the course of the years, yes, now that many customers have, our regulars have come to us, they often tell us, you know, yours is the only meat we eat. We don't buy anything from the store anymore. And so it's rewarding to know that they like us that much and appreciate our product that much.